scene report of your police force in action. There are no actors. There is no script. Every voice, every sound is authentic. The investigations are recorded as they actually occur. Night Watch, presented with the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, W.N. Hildebrand, Chief. We switch you now to Detective Unit 5-6, somewhere in the field and to police recorder, Don Reed. Fire three, clear. KMA, 394. 5-6 to 1. Now, we're at Overland and Washington Place. We've got a 214 here in front of the bar. Would you send a uniform unit down here, code 2? Oh, one to 5 6 10, 4. Car 50 at Overland and Washington Place. 214 in the street. Meet detective here at 5 6, code 2. Well, we have a 214 fight going, uh... Just across the street in front of a bar. Uh, five two to control one. Uh, we're right on top of this two fourteen call. You want us to take it? Control one to five two ten four. Our car five zero cancel five two will handle. Things are moving very fast. We're right in the middle of the highway, waiting for a break in the traffic. Now we got it swinging around. Getting a clear shot here now. Heading back. That uniform car that just radioed in is pulling up to the curb. We're swinging in behind. Here's the quick picture. Two men, two women pushing each other around. Things are getting a little rough right here. The uniformed officer, Al Arnold, and his partner waiting into the argument. We're in plain clothes. Psychologically, it's best for the uniform boys to handle. We'll stand by and just in case things get out of hand. No, you won't. I will. No, you won't. I will. I won't take that to Please anybody. Please don't. Now, come on, now. You'll be over tomorrow. Please. Just hold everything, will you? What's trouble? He just called me scum. Well, no. He said I was more than a snake. Yeah. I have worked in this bar for five years. Well, that's what hurt your pride. See? And I have you know never... coming back. Don't worry about it. Look, you know what you're mad at? And you got me fired from working? You didn't get fired, I'll bet you. I'll Julie. send a complaint, okay? No. You know you'll be working here next week. Well, Look, then I'll they... send a complaint just because I won't put up with him. You've had more insults than these guys ever gave you. Not, not that ever. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not going to have the argument on the fire. Which one of you called her the name? Well, you've been drinking, you know that. I have not. I bet you have. I'll take a sobriety test against you any time. All right. Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Because I thought... Well, why get her mad, though? Oh, get anybody mad. Oh, you're drinking your life, and you know it. What's the difference? Well, then why make a statement? Now, if you a question, what do you got to do with the argument? Nothing. Well, plenty. It's my buddy. Well, I don't interrupt saying the argument's between the young lady and this fella. Now, I just advise you to keep out of it. Now, take some advice. And you too, fella. Will you please keep... Try to settle this without... No, no, no. Ask the policeman here what I said. Well, I'm not asking the policeman. I'm asking you. Well, yeah, I, 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 I said a bad name. I apologize. She did you apologize to her? Yes, I did. And, and then what did you walk up to the fire and say to me? About what? You said that I was lower than scum. After yeah. what you said to me, did I not apologize to you? Did you tell the truth? I'll tell the truth. I did. Did I apologize to you before you said it to me? I'm sorry. I apologize to you. I'm sorry for it. I'm still sorry for it. I didn't mean to say it. That's the story. Sorry, all, yeah. all together, she walked out here. We well, well, no, 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 Control one is calling us on the radio. Okay. Let's get over to our car. But just glancing back, the uh, uniformed officers have settled this little discussion. The man is heading north, and the woman south. That takes care of that. 
five six. We were out of the car. Uh, go ahead. Uh, one to five six. Are you clear? Five six. Roger. Control one to five six. Unit five three has been dispatched to two nine three one Ingersoll Place to see the woman about a possible assault. This is near your present location. Uh, will you follow up? Uh, five six to one. Roger. Uh, you might tell five three we'll be there in a couple of minutes. Uh, one to five three. Detective unit five six. Rolling. Well, this seems to be our night for assaults. Thinking of that woman heading south. Be interesting to know what she called that fellow. On second thought, maybe we better skip it. Middle-aged, 50s, heavy set, 
each armed with a bottle of beer. Yes. No, the no. woman struggling with one dog. The other is in the process of bowling the over. <laughs> so the woman and one officer is wrestling one of the dogs, a big fellow. The other is trying very playfully to remove my coat sleeve with my arm in it. <laughs> Tom Boyle. Every man for himself. Trying to get him in the bedroom. Well, now let's see what it's all about. Is your husband the one that uh, struck your neighbor next door? No, no, I don't know. Here's the situation where we got a call in here and I'm stalled. You want to come back here, sir? We're talking to you. Did you go over next door here and hit this man across the face with the back of your hand? I did not. I know it's just a store, I think, do No, no, no. Those people are ready to sign a complaint against them if you start seeing in your own garden and you're not alone. You understand? I understand. You're not supposed to go into someone else's house, especially when you get drinking and go out and smack a guy across the face. A good way to Are you career. accusing me of that, sir? I'm telling you what the gentleman next door told us. He happens to have a witness to the fact that it happened. His wife. We were in the house, yes. What happened tonight? Well, my husband rang the doorbell. And I came behind. And she came out, and then she said, well, she said, come on, come on, let's go get the cop. I'll make the next call. Well, I'll wait just a minute. We'll make the next call. Listen. No, honey. These officers just went next door and talked to that side and heard their side of the story. They want to hear your side of the story here. Well, they didn't want to hear mine. They didn't want to hear mine. Well, they didn't want to hear yours. 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 Well, so you have no reason to lie to us in any way because we're not going to harm you. Did you push him? We just want to keep the peace. <clears throat> well, that's what I want to do is keep the peace. Where have you been drinking tonight, sir? There? In my home. I never drink any place but my home. Well, did you no, put it? Did you lay a hand on him? I did no. not. I, I did not lay a hand. No, he's not there. Why would they call the police? <laughs> ask. Ask the person that, that, that is trying to cause trouble. Well, but these officers came down here and interested in keeping the peace, keeping people quiet. Yes. If they have a return call down here, then they're going to do something about it. Well, why can't I turn around and make a call and call you gentlemen no, down here? Time here. Uh, under the same circumstances. Because of the time you're drunk and intoxicated. No. I'm in my home. Doesn't make any difference. You're creating a disturbance. Yes, sir. You understand that? Yes, sir. But you can go to jail, despite the fact you're in your own home. Yes, sir. But these officers come down here and return and call somebody from the jail. And if I, is there any time that I cannot call them? At uh, at three o'clock this morning, uh, tomorrow morning, I'll call. And uh, will you will you give them the yeah. same courtesy yeah. that you're giving me? If they have, you have a legitimate reason to call the police. The police will answer the call. The 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 the, 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 the words that goes on. Sir, you think because they gave you a break, you might give them a break and stay away from there? Why did they give me a break? Oh, yeah. They give you the break, they're not signing a complaint on this time for assault. All right, I'll get this soon as they sign a complaint to me, because I'll, uh, if they want to dig me, I'll dig them. Well, you're in no position to do anything at the present time. You're intoxicated. I'm they're not that. doing They don't want to sign a complaint. The only thing they want is to be left alone over there. Same, same respect you people want to be left alone. They are. They are. Not they. So you think that you can stay here and keep quiet and help the over there and keep quiet? Okay. I will not promise that. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We come down here again, somebody's going to jail. Chances are it'll be you, sir, because you're the intoxicated one. You're the man. I'll take a chance on that. Now, you're controlling them? No. <coughs> Listen, I've been married to him for 23 years. Just keep it quiet here. I'll keep it quiet. Then nobody be happy. Go in. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks. Bye. Heading back now to our radio unit. The situation is pretty well cleared up. Well, they were sure a couple of big dogs, weren't they? Yeah. The first time I ever wrestled one that outweighed me. (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, five six to control one. Uh, clear on the assault call. Advised. Five three has a report. Control one to five six. Roger. Five six. Will you meet the captain of unit five zero at three six zero one Barbara? They have a burglary suspect in custody. Request to contact them at once. Five six. Roger. We're rolling. listening to Night Watch and following the activities of a detective unit on its tour of duty. Remember, the people and sounds you are hearing are real and the investigations are recorded in the field as they actually occur. We'll bring you the final results of tonight's action at the conclusion of Night Watch. Can you spare $10 to help feed a family of four for a month? If you can, send it to CARE together with your name and address and that of some needy relative or friend in Europe or Israel, India, Pakistan, Japan, Okinawa, or the Philippines. CARE will do the rest and guarantees delivery. The address is simply CARE. CARE, New York. CARE is the sure economical way to send food and clothing abroad. And now we switch you to Detective Unit 5-6, somewhere in the field, and your police recorder, Don Reed. Moving into the location where one of our units has a burglary suspect in custody. Here's the picture. Uniform car parked at curb. Suspect in the back. Arms behind him. Apparently handcuffed. They don't take a Suspect for a few minutes. He admits breaking into the building all right, but uh, says he just wanted to use the phone. I'll take him take him and we'll talk when we get down the station. Suspect is not a juvenile. Uh, right. Moving uh, into the house. Man and wife, victims waiting for us. Captain Lugo checking over a port and uniformed officer. Can you tell us what happened? All we know is when we came to the door, it was bold, as you see. We couldn't do that long. And that, then we heard someone in here, and we could hear him moving in here while he was trying to get this thing down. Trying to get out of the building. Getting out of the building. I, I told that there's somebody in here. Was and then we could hear him. Was he, was, he, was he trying to get out of the window when you came in? Is that... I don't know. And, uh, he said that he was. Said, the the window was open when we came I back. Was he by the window trying to get out? Well, the window was open. We have closed it since. Well, and he took this down. You didn't, you didn't leave it open yourself. No. In other oh, words, no. he, 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 he did this himself. Yeah, no. Well, the way it stands now, he's been taken to the police station. He's going to be booked for suspicion of burglary. And the investigation will reveal whatever it may. Mm -hmm. So it will just have to take its course. Mm -hmm. Okay? Fine. Just whatever. Over uh, next to the windows. Take these along. Take a burglar to us. Sergeant Perkins gathering up a bunch of tools used by the suspect to pry open the window. Hammer, screwdriver, crowbar. Uh, give this to Perkins. Yeah, Captain wants to check out the address. Yeah, we'll do it. Perk, what's the uh, suspect's name and address? Oh, good. Let's go over and shake his house. Okay, I'm with you. You are? Then you won't mind help carry these tools. Oh, you? wait a minute. This is in my contract. <laughs> <laughs> On this 459 call, we're going over to check out the suspect's house. Uh, we hold him in the detention room, and we'll talk to him as soon as we get to the station. Welcome by 6104. We'll advise the booking sergeant. KMA 394.
arriving now at the home of the burglary suspect. Lives on the second floor. It's a modest apartment building. Number two. It's this one here on the left-hand side. Hello. We're from the police department. I think we have your son in jail. Can we come in and talk to you a minute, please? Okay. Mother motioning us in. We, uh, we caught him in a building tonight. <clears throat> Up in Culver City. And uh, we wanted to come down here with your permission, kind of look things over, see if he has anything that he shouldn't have. You mean your mother's bone? Yes, ma'am. You can sit down if you want, ma'am. I'll be out. Uh -huh. And he tells us that uh, he was trying to make a long-distance telephone call to his sister. In this particular case, and he's committed a felony so he could make a telephone call if his story is... Well, I have a daughter in New York, of course. We'd just like to look around if we may. We'd like to have you with us just to see if there's anything well, more that... Uh, I don't think there is, but this is kind of We'd like to look at his bedroom more than anything else. I find the situation a little bit right next door to us. They've had a number of thefts of automobiles. Well, if there's any automobile parts or anything like that, that's... Into the suspect's bedroom? This is the only bag that he has. I wouldn't steal my boyfriend if he's wrong about anything. Well, we just... I'm very much shocked about it. Here's... Uh, pardon me. Sure. Uh, this is his call here. Just the usual assortment. Pretty much routine. Has your son ever been in any trouble at all? Or? No, he has. Never. He never has. Would he, uh, do you suppose he have any particular reason for going into the building to make the phone call instead of maybe making it a pay phone? Or I couldn't tell you that. I can't understand why he's a suicide like that. I really can't tell you. He might have been trying to get in touch with my girl. Well, that would be nice. Is there any, uh, uh, your boys are real pretty truthful and... He always has been. How old is he? Uh, He's 25. 25. Thank you very much, ma'am. We're going back to the station and talk to your son. Good night. In front of me is a two-way mirror. I'm looking into the interrogation room... Sergeant Perkins is on the phone, running a record check. Suspect is sitting at the desk, nervously trying to light a cigarette. Nice-looking young fellow, crew cut, horn-rimmed glasses. Now let's uh, move on into the office. That's about all we'll need. Thanks very much. Okay, good night. All right, now let's have the straight story. What were you doing in that building? I wanted to call back to New York to speak to my sister. Just as I was starting to use the phone, they drove up, and I got nervous and locked the door because I knew I wasn't supposed to be in there. Did you have permission to go into the building? No, I didn't. What were you going to do, uh, make a long-distance call on their phone? Yes, I was. Charge it to them? No, I wasn't. Well, how were you going to pay for it? I'd give them the money. When? In the morning? In the morning? No, when I got paid. Well, do you have an emergency call to make? Uh, to be no, I just wanted to speak to my sister. you have a phone at your house? I have a phone at my apartment. They didn't even claim that his apartment. But she doesn't like people to be using it for long-distance telephone calls. Well, you had no business in that building, though. I know I didn't. I know I'll admit that. Were well, you going to go out the window? I was trying to see if I could go. <laughs> you realize what uh, what you've done tonight? Yes, I did. A felony just to make a telephone call? I know I did. Taking a chance of getting shot? Yes, I know. It's awful stupid and idiotic. What disgrace upon your folks? I know. You put me out on a charge of burglary. Illegal entering of a building without the owner's permission. Mm -hmm. 
Do you want the penalty of burglary cause for? No, sir, I don't. actually happened on the Night Watch. And now back to police headquarters and Chief W.N. Hildebrand. As you followed our officers on the tour of Night Watch tonight, you can see the diversified problems that come up in police work. In the first case, for example, two families quarreling was settled by merely advising that a reoccurrence of tonight's events could result in the subjects being arrested. The second investigation, the couple arguing on the street, likewise received a similar warning. In the final case of the suspect trapped in the building, he was booked on suspicion of burglary, which carries a sentence of not less than five years in the state prison. However, there were extenuating circumstances which the arresting officers included in their report and which the court took into consideration. The suspect was given a suspended sentence and placed on a two-year probation. We are recording our investigations as they happen on the night watch to show you a police investigation may turn up the evidence to prove a person guilty or, by the same token, may clear a suspect of any complicity with a crime. As a peace officer for 29 years, I've come to one conclusion. Police work is much more enjoyable when you help the innocent than when you prosecute the guilty. I hope in a small way this will help you understand our problems as you ride each week on the Night Watch. Thank you, Chief Hildebrand. You have been following the on-the-scene reports of your police force in action. Every voice, every sound has been real. Night Watch. Brought to you through the cooperation of the Police Department of Culver City, California, is produced by Sterling Tracy and Jim Hedlock, with technical advice by Sergeant Ron Perkins, and is described in the field by police recorder Don Reed. <laughs>